will mark like the one month in for the interim leadership team. So the interim leadership team is myself, uh, Tim Nelson, who's the, um, can't even talk at this point. Fire uh, chief. Of the fire department. <laughs> uh, Sergeant Janet Griffin from the uh, police department and Kat Newman, who is has the title of current title is implement grant implementation uh, manager, but was previously the program assistant, which that position was sort of like the um the second in charge, like even though the title doesn't suggest suggest that. Um, the implementation team makeup was actually my suggestion because um, when um, through the executive team um, leadership meeting with the town manager, it was suggested that I was the ideal person to take this on. Uh, I really insisted that we have a team approach because while I feel that I have many of the skills that are needed to help shore up the department, I don't have all of them and I don't have a lot of public safety. Um, uh, background, although I do have some. So we prepared uh, basically a chart that outlines the various skill sets that I think are needed in this transition period that looked at experience supervising, you know, um, a large department, you know, more than two people, um, experience with, um, with reorganizations, experience with human right uh, with uh, HR experience with grant development and implementation just outlined a lot of the executive skill set and uh, if you were to look at that chart you would see that the team basically has between 12 and 48 years on these various topics like we all in various spots so with Chief Nelson having th um, the most experience of us but the others having um, a variety of different um experiences. The I think that the primary purpose of the team, which is transition, right, it's not to be there long term, is to help shore up the department so that uh, a new director can be appointed and the team can continue on with its journey towards being an, uh, an alternative response to some types of calls. And so if actually it's been a fascinating month. Um, we started out with the leadership team meeting with the responders on September 19th. We had a full day retreat, um, starting with the restorative justice circle where responders had an opportunity to discuss their hopes and fears for the department. Um, that was followed up with a uh, um, a discussion about mission and values. There, um, there is, are there, I would say at that point, we're coming closer together now, but at that point, there was really two different camps among the responders about what their work should look like, with some leaning heavily into the social services space and others leaning heavily into the public um, public safety space. And, and really this department is meant to be sort of a combination of the two. Like um, it's got a very unique uh, foothold in the work that they're trying to, you know, that they're tasked with doing. So um, that conversation with the responders were, were, were it was really great. And uh, we ended up re, um, looking at the previous mission statement, which I think really was more like a vision statement because it was like a page and a half and writing a very succinct mission statement that looks to what the purpose of the organization is and having that be uh, a process where everyone, all of the responders were involved um, so that we could come to some agreement about like, what are what are you tasked with doing? And, and we have begun to uh, make sure that we're following that mission. So we've instituted some um, practices that I think uh, were, in my opinion, sort of slack around procedures. Um, the responders are being asked to utilize their radios when they go out on a call and to call in, just a standard procedure. Um, we have, um, have uh, set aside Tuesdays as an in-service day where responders will have an opportunity to get new training and refresh their training. Um, and that's happening on a weekly basis. We've also identified some uh, training opportunities 
outside of the department. So for example, uh, all the responders went down and met with uh, Mike Curtin in dispatch and had an opportunity to review their protocols around communications and the radios and working with dispatch. Um, two, well, four responders at two different times have gone to um, crisis intervention uh, team trainings in the in Hampshire County. Um, Vanessa, one of the responders, and Kat are scheduled to go to another CIT training, full day training tomorrow. Um, we identified uh, training opportunities that hadn't occurred for the for the responders, and we're putting those in place. So some of the responders had gone through the basic EMT training, some had not. All of those things are are really designed to shore up uh, the department. And in addition to that, um, we've taken the leadership team and all of the responders met with the Department of Public Health, which is a primary funder for the work and have reviewed the initial grant that established the department. There is There are some gaps between what was proposed in the grant and what has occurred operationally. Um, as we uh, work to um, renew that grant by do, providing the, the grantors with an update, we're trying to bring operations and what was stated in the grant more aligned. So to bring those, those things um, together, um, the uh, grantors had an in-site visit with the department. They met with the town manager, the HR director, the leadership team, and all of the responders and the the, their meeting with the responders did not include the leadership team, so they were able to freely talk with them and discuss any concerns or raise questions. Um, I, I think uh, it's, uh, I can safely say that they felt like we have positioned the, the department to, um, to move forward in a very positive way that's in line with what the grant stated it would do and um, with the operations um, that we have in place. Uh, the leadership team has been a part of the Harvard Government Performance Lab cohort. So that's uh, a non-fiscal grant that the department received under um, um, the prior director's leadership that allows us to meet with other um, communities who are in the process of establishing similar um, departments. And I say similar because each community, as the more and more, I, we had our second meeting, or I had my second meeting with the Harvard uh, Government uh, Performance Lab cohort today, and each community and state is approaching this work very differently. There is no one, you know, best practice. So, um, you know, locally, you know that Northampton has established their model in uh, in the public health uh, realm. In Amherst, the decision was made to have this as a standalone in public safety. We had extensive conversations today in our cohort with a gentleman from um, Virginia, where as a state, they have decided to set up regional um, responses so so that that aligns with their five regional mental health, um, you know, service areas. So each department is doing is is really doing the work very differently. The uh, the affiliation with Harvard, I think, is going to bear a lot of fruit because they are providing us with information about some of the challenges that have been presented to the department around dispatching calls. I mean, it's it's so one of the questions that I asked uh, today in that Zoom meeting was, you know, what uh, resources, what data do you have about the startup time from conception to dispatch? And the response from Harvard, and they will send this data and I'll be happy to share it with you, was that on average, it takes a department a year and a half to two and a half years to get to the point where they're dispatching calls. And we're just at that one and a half year mark, not quite there yet. So um, so we, you know, I think we're we're where we should be. The other bit of information from the Harvard Performance Lab 
was that most communities start with very few calls, um, call types. And so we're having that discussion about what the call type should be. And in fact, so um, uh, this will come up, a, there's a little bit of, of course, overlap between DEI and CRESS because I'm <laughs> wearing two hats. Um, but uh, so five, one, two, three, four, Four of the responders participated in the liberatory visioning sessions that were conducted by Dr. Barbara Love. And um, as a follow-up to that session, um, there's a group of municipal staff employees who are in a group that we call the core equity group. That group meets um, monthly um, for two hours and works on DEI initiatives, self-learning and um, with the goal that they're going to be seeds that are spread throughout the municipality. So that uh, the core equity group met on Tuesday. Um, there were eight of us in the room and six of us had participated in the liberatory visioning um, uh, sessions. Uh, the follow-up session that we did in core equity was to build on what are the skills uh, and techniques that you use to build um, coalitions and co consensus building? And um, how do you have these very difficult conversations? So I led that workshop and then following the workshop, two of the responders who were uh, who participated in the group thought this is a great technique for us to use for d discussion around call types. So actually um, I said, I think that you guys should lead that next in service. You know, you've had some training, you can lead your colleagues in this process, I will support you, but they'll be leading the, the next in service, which is scheduled for Tuesday around call types, using the techniques that they've learned both through Dr. Love's liberatory visioning and through the consensus and coalition building workshop that I did. So we're providing lots of opportunities for responders to have professional development. I met with each of them individually at the um, at the inception and, and had, you know, a really in-depth conversation with them about their, their work in the department, their challenges, their goals, their um, both long-term and, um, and short-term. Uh, you know, I, I um, actually, before I headed home tonight, I sent them a note saying, congratulations, we're one month in, and I think we have done remarkable work for the last 30 days, given where we were on September 20th. Um, and I, um, you know, I, I, I am proud of the work that we're doing. I am very proud and um, and I really think that the team approach was the right leadership approach. I know that there are members of the community who have concerns about it. Um, what I said to the CSSJC at their, I missed the October meeting, but um, but at their prior meeting was that, you know, I did not take this task on to fail. Uh, I don't, I want to, I don't want to have this job forever. Like I'm very clear about that. I've said that publicly to everyone who's listening to me, but I didn't, it is my, it is my sincere hope that at the end of the this interim period, this department will be in a better position for the next director. And I'm doing everything I can to ensure that. So I um I am I, you know, I've discussed with the leadership team and with the town manager what the final report from our interim leadership team will look at, like all of the activities that we've done. I've I've suggested that I think it's important that an audit be conducted, a financial audit, because if I were the person who was coming in, with, I would want to know exactly everything that um, that I'm taking on, not only the personnel issues, but also having uh, assurance about where the finances are, where the grants, what's left of the grant, what can I do, what I can't do. And so I think we'll have a very comprehensive um, perspectives to give to the NEC director, along with a lot of recommendations, but they won't be just that recommendations. It's not um, our intention to decide some of the critical issues that I think has that have to be made about the, the um, about the future of CRESS. And um, so, I, you know, I, I think that CRESS is in really an, an excellent position for, for where we are. 
Well, thank you for that report. Um, I raised my hand, A, because I was going to tell you we needed to move on a little bit. Yeah, we have <laughs> sorry. Things under the agenda. And also to just say that um, because you missed the meeting with, uh, I knew that you or Paul were part of the discussion that the CSSJC had um, specifically around Crest and where we are right now with them. I'm hoping that you all can reach back or at least attend the next meeting um, because they had some very strong reactions and recommendations for what is and what is not going on with Crest right now. Yeah. I was leaving it that way. Yeah, so the leadership team, um, and then I'll move on to DEI, which I'll do very quickly and invite Jennifer to um, to um, to add as well. So the leadership team was scheduled to meet with Cress at their last meeting. However, that was also the evening of the candidates information night. I reached out to the chair and informed her of the conflict, and she decided to go ahead with their meeting. Um, but we uh, we are scheduled to meet with them in November. Okay. Yes, they did mention all of that at the at the meeting that I was at, um, present at. Um, Deb, did you have something to add for about Cress? Yeah, just a quick question. I really appreciate this update, but my burning question is what's happening with the director being on admin leave and how long is that going to take? And that was part of what the strong discussion was mm -hmm. uh, at the CSSJC meeting last week. But Pamela or Paul? Yeah, so I can address that. So uh, Earl Miller has submitted his resignation. So he will be, he's employed by the town until November 30th. Um, and so after that, but that means we will begin looking for a new Crest director immediately. That's a relief. I mean, just a, there's a path. Clarity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. And um, so last thing about Crest is that um, the responders, you know, that we had two resignations. There was already one vacancy and we had two resignations. The responder position has been posted and yay, we've gotten the first application for, for that position. So we're on our way to, to filling that position. 